Hello, intro students. Now that you've studied objects a little bit, I think it's a good time to start learning how to create graphical user interfaces. Today, the editor we'll be using is called NetBeans. It's very similar to Eclipse, um, but there's a few minor differences. And one of the differences is that it has a really nice way to, to create graphical user interfaces visually. Um, Eclipse actually has one of these also uh, that you can download as a plugin. Um, but for today, I want to use this one. So let's make a new project. We'll go to File, New Project. And we'll be making a Java project. So here you'll see Java and Java application. And I will call this one test3. <clears throat> you can click Finish. And here it is. And you'll notice that it already creates uh, an initial class for you that, with a main method. Um, we're actually not going to use that. What we're going to do is right click on the package test3 and then create a new JFrame form. And we can call this one guessing game. Um, your name should start with a capital letter. It should not have a space in it. <clears throat> okay, so now we see something new. Um, over here we have different uh, graphical user interface elements that we could drag over into our frame here. Um, it, we're currently in the design tab. If you click on source, you'll see Java source code, which corresponds to what this visual graphical interface is going to look like. So let's start this way. Let's start by dragging a panel across. So I, I selected it, and I'm dragging now. And I haven't let go of the mouse yet, but you see this element, it tries to let me snap it to different positions. So I'll let it be there, and then I'll expand it until it snaps to the bottom and snaps to the right. Um, this whole system is called Swing, uh, which is Java's built-in system for user interfaces. Um, in Swing, all of the elements that you might think about, like buttons and text and uh, text boxes, all have to be inside some containing element. Um, and usually that containing element is something called a panel. So you create the panel first, and then you put the other things into the panel. So let's start with a label. A label is a great way j to just have some text. So there's the label. I'm going to drag it to be the full width. And if I want to, I can double click on it and change the text. What if we want to do other things like make it larger or center it? Um, you can change the properties by looking in the properties uh, box right down here. So you can see if you scroll a whole list of different properties that that thing has. Most of them we're not going to be interested in. Um, you can read what they are. So you can set the background color here. Uh, if I want to change the font, I could change the font here. I could change the foreground color. I'm going to change the font to start with, so I'll click the dot, dot, dot next to the font property. And I'm just going to make it larger, like 18 type. OK, I also want to change its alignment. So here's horizontal alignment. I'll click there and make it center alignment. All right, so that's starting to look better. Um, let's put another element in there. <clears throat> I think I'm going to put a text field. You can put it wherever you feel most comfortable. Um, I'm just going to let it auto align itself to the left and the top here. Um, I'll just keep it that size. That's fine. This is where I want the user to type in their guess for the guessing game. Um, again, if you double, oh, aha. OK, so if you double click in it, it actually takes you to the source code. Uh, I'm not ready for that yet. Let's go back to design. <laughs> if I right click on it, I can say edit text. And I'm just going to have it be blank. And it's resized it because there's no text in there, but I'm going to physically resize it myself to be that size. All right, so now I've got this text box. Let's put in a button as well. So I'll drag a button over and have it align right there. And I'll right click and I'll edit the text. And I'll say guess. All right, let's look at the source code that corresponds. OK, so actually, hold on. Let's run it. When I run it, ah, it's not working because actually, if you look in the project, it's running. This class, which is the empty test3, uh, let's right click and delete that. I'm going to delete it. I don't want to save delete it. I'm going to be on save. OK, um, so let's run it again. It'll say, is this guessing game your main class? The answer is yes. All right, so this is what it looks like when I run the program. I can click the button, and it does nothing. And I can type in this text box, and it does nothing. All right, so let's look at the actual Java code that got generated when I did this. If I click on source, 
um, this entire class right here is what describes what that interface looks like. So uh, it's got the, all the familiar parts that you're used to in a class. So the class name is Guessing Game. You'll notice this is the constructor. It's called Guessing Game. Um, the thing that happens inside the constructor is it runs a method called init components, which is initializing all the components. You might be wondering where are all the fields? When we made our classes, usually we declared variables at the top here that would be the fields of the class. It creates all the fields at the bottom of the class. So here they are. We've got jbutton1, jlabel1, jpanel1. j is short for Java. Um, and these are what they seem to be. jbutton1 is an object that corresponds to this button. It's called 1 because if we add more buttons, those will be named jbutton2 and jbutton3. These are not really very good names, so I'd like to rename our objects. So if you click on the button and you right click and you say change variable name, I'm going to call ours uh, uh, guess button. Uh, variables, remember, start with a lowercase letter, cannot have spaces. I click OK, and now if I go back to the source code, you see that it's renamed it to guess button. If I try and type in here, it doesn't let me. Um, because it has automatically generated this in the right way and it doesn't want us to mess up what it's auto automatically generated. All right, I'm going to rename a couple other things. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to change the variable name to uh, guess text box. You can call yours whatever you'd like. Okay, the rest of this um, is less important for us for the moment. Let's go back to design and let's actually make the button do something when we click it. So buttons and in fact all of these objects respond to events. <coughs> events are things that might happen when the program is running. So for example, uh, the user clicking the button would be an event. It's also an event if the mouse goes into the button or out of the button. So if the mouse touches the button, that will tr or that could trigger an event which would run a special method that we'd write. And it would run code that we would write for when the mouse goes over the button. So let's now go, I've right clicked on the button, and I'm going to events, and I'm going to action, and I'm going to have action performed. This is a generic kind of an event. Um, for the button, this method will run whenever we click the button. So it's spit us out here into the source again. You look at the method name and it says guess button action performed. So you can guess what it does based on the name. Guess button, that's about the button. Action performed means this is the method that will run when a certain action was performed, when they clicked on it. All right, let's just make sure this is going to do something that makes sense to us. So I'm just going to put a print statement that says hi. And now I'm going to run it to make sure that whenever I click the button, it will say hi. I'm running it, I'm clicking the button, it's saying hi. Cool, that looks good. All right, I wanted to do some other stuff. Uh, I want to look inside the text field and see what number did they type in there. So we've studied objects for a reason because there's a whole lot of functions built into these objects. So down here, uh, our text field is called guess text box. So if I want to get text, if I want to ask it what text did the user type in there, I've got to run a getter method on this object. Because only this object knows what text is in there. So I'm back up here. My variable is called guess text box. And because it's a method, I can say dot. And these are all the methods that I can run on it. I'm going to say get text. So as I'm typing, you see it's. Uh, is narrowing the menu of things I can do. This is a getter method that gets the text. I want to save that text somewhere, so I'll create a string variable called text, and I'm saving it in there. And so now, after that, I want to system.out.println, you typed, and then text. So it will just display back what was that text. Let's run it. So right now, they didn't type anything, but if I typed if I type EO and I click guess, now it knows what I've done. All right, this general pattern that I just showed you, where you uh, use the design menu to drag over some objects and you position them, and then if you want the objects to do things, you right click on them 
and you go to events and you select an event and then you get to type in the source code here for what should happen when that event occurs and if you want to tell other elements inside the program other buttons other fields to do things you look at what's their variable name and you run some methods that they make available to you so let me show you another one uh, here we are back in guest button action performed I'll take the guest text box and I want I want to clear it so that's not getting text out of it that's setting the text I'm telling it that I want it to change its text so I'll call set text and I'm just gonna have two uh, two quotation marks with nothing in between that's the empty string and what's gonna happen when I run this is I'm gonna tell the text box to replace what text it has right now with this that's just nothing and that's only remember when this is gonna happen all of this code only runs when I click the button because it's inside the guess button action performed method. All right, let's run it. I'm typing hi, I click guess, and as you see, it disappeared. It reset because I had told it to reset. And down here, it knows that I typed hi. All right, let's pause here. We'll do another one in a minute. Um, we'll round it out with some more interesting behaviors.